This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Let's take a look at this week's top stocks, ETFs, and cryptos to watch. First up is JETS. Now JETS is the ETF for the uh, major U.S. carriers. And as you can see, uh, uh, the ETF uh, gapped down at the start of Omicron and dropped down about to the 1950 level. Now we had a couple of squeezes in here because the news has been very mixed. It got up to the 50-day uh, moving average and then up to the 50-day moving average again uh, last week. Now, it looks like it's rolling over, and of course, this is because we don't know the extent of the Omicron disruption, especially when it comes to employment, uh, because uh, uh, the big carriers are unable to uh, uh, staff their uh, airplanes, and there's, so there's a lot of disruption. So I think we get a decline down here, again, to this uh, 1950 level of potential breakdown that fills this big gap here from November of 2020. Now, that level may be a pretty good um, buying opportunity, either right down here at the gap fill or right here around uh, uh, 16 or f between 1550 and 1650. Because once Omicron is done, I think we're going to have just enough uh, herd immunity in the system that we're going to have a pretty positive uh, end, of, end of first quarter and second quarter, maybe even further. If Omicron really does its thing, we're going to have a ton of immunity, which along with COVID drugs and vaccines, and all that stuff is going out and the pandemic can turn it into an endemic, which is a lot less disruptive for most human beings. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at January effect plays. Now, January effect, uh, the stocks have lost ground in uh, 2021. Uh, that could make up that ground in 2022. And uh, Disney is a very good example. The stock dropped about 15 or 16 percent this year. A very poor performance. It's come back up to the 50 a day moving average. And we do have this big gap here. So it's a little bit tough to buy. I wouldn't buy it necessarily right away, but you may want to buy the next pullback. Uh, and then uh, hold it for a couple of months while this January effect comes into play. Now, perhaps another play, which might even be better, would be a square. Now, square's had a terrible year as well. If you take a look down here, you can see we have this big double top pattern that broke uh, in uh, December and has come back down about the 160 level. Uh, now, uh, this is another one which is really hard to buy because it uh, you've got to hold your nose in order to do it. And it might not be a perfect time, but it's, it is a perfect uh, uh, January effect play because the stock's been a very strong performer for the couple of years leading into 2021. And it probably will do so again, especially when the economy uh, starts to come back uh, after uh, COVID-19. Uh, now, moving on to this week's earnings, the only big uh, 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 stock that's up is going to be uh, Walgreens uh, Boots Alliance. Now, this has been a perennial underperformer that uh, has had a decent 2021. As you can see, it topped out all the way back in 15. Uh, we had a lower high in 18, and then we had another lower high uh, here in uh, April of 2021. But it's sort of bottomed out in the mid-40s, pushing above 50. A lot of that has to do with them being a provider of COVID-19 vaccines and boosters, which has boosted uh, foot traffic and improved their earnings. Now, there are reasons to be cautious about, uh, about Walgreens. Uh, Morgan Stanley just two weeks ago uh, downgraded the stock, indicating they expect no EPS growth in either 2022 or 2023. Now, taking a look at crypto, let's go to the uh, granddaddy, which is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's in a very interesting spot. As you can see, uh, we have this, uh, this uh, sell-off down here. The, we could take this line here. Let me put this right over here. As you can see, we have the rally, which from about um, uh, September into, uh, into November, came down to the 786 retracement. It's tested the 786 retracement for about five weeks, and it's holding very well. And up here, uh, we have resistance at about the 52,000 level. So uh, if you try to ignore this little uh, shadow here, we do have a rectangle pattern which if we get a breakout above 52,000, that's also going to break resistance to the 50-day moving average. Now, I think that will push us up maybe to the 58,000 level or where this double top breakdown took a place. So we may have a nice little move from right down here up to right up here. Uh, we do have a uh, daily cycles looking good. And to tell you the truth, the weekly cycles looking good as well. Here we go. See, it's almost trying to turn up into a buy signal. The problem is down here at the monthly cycle, as you can see, this monthly cycle is very active. Uh, for that reason, I certainly don't expect Bitcoin to get back up to its prior high anytime soon. So this is really a trader's market. Try to get what you can with Bitcoin as it sort of grinds sideways and works through this massive congestion pattern. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the banks. And banks can be kind of boring, though they also can be very profitable. 
and my favorite bank in the group is the Bank of Nova Scotia. Now, as you can see, this looks good all by itself. We have a very nice breakout, and Canadian banks have outperformed U.S. banks. The stock also pays a dividend, a dividend yield in excess of 4%. But the best part of this, if we go back a few years, and we go back all the way here, take a look at this. We have a cup and handle breakout going back all the way to 2018. You go back to here, and we have another little cup and handle breakout going all the way back to 2014. So this rally right here is a big deal. We could get another a really a solid year. I think it, the stock went up about, uh, if you take a look all the way back at uh, 2021, about 33% this year. It's a little lofty right here, but I would certainly buy any pullback into the upper 60s because the stock could be a very, very strong performer uh, in 2022.